Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Deal with the Devil by CGE. This is a four player only game. It takes 120 minutes and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Deal with the Devil, one of you is going to be the devil, two of you will be powerful human leaders or mortal leaders of a kingdom, and the last person will be a cultist leader of a kingdom. Each player is going to get a mystery box that's going to contain what you are, so there's kind of a traitor element in the game, as well as the resources that you start with and what you're going to be asking for in the game. You're going to be getting a two-tiered tower that protects you from showing other players what you have, as well as a way of explaining what you're going to be doing on your turn in your action phase. There's a main game board, which which is going to allow you to determine what round it is, as well as how much income you're going to need from being borrowed in taxation here. And then this, of course, over here is the interest that is going to occur as the game progresses. You're going to be building buildings for your kingdom. You are going to be gathering valuable resources that are going to then give you the ability to build more buildings, as well as, of course, there's going to be times when you do well and you do good for your kingdom, which will give you these little angel wings, and times when you're doing bad, making bad choices, and you'll get devil wings and that'll score you negative and positive points throughout the game. There's characters that you can take along the way, and these guys are going to represent, uh, be represented by symbols that will allow you to gather certain types of banners that will score you points at the end of the game based on what you've gathered for your castle. All throughout the game, there's a lot of different actions and phases that you'll be taking place in, but the main objective is to score the most points on the board at the very bottom here on the secondary board tracker. It's going to involve your influence. It'll tell you what you're going to be doing on different rounds by having this little board here that you can flip back and forth and then of course you're going to have these guys here the inquisitors that will pop up on the third and fifth round to determine whether or not you need to pay for them based on how many souls you have the devil wants to gather your soul the coldest wants to give the devil their souls and the humans are debating about whether or not it's worth giving souls to different players for a valuable currency let's go into the game how to set it up for the most part how to play the game and of course my review so there's a good amount of setup for Deal with the Devil, and because of that, and as far as gameplay goes, I'm going to link a video in the description that I found that was very helpful to give you a full in-depth review slash a setup example and explanation of gameplay, and you can check that out. But I'm just going to go ahead and go over the very basics, because this is not set up as it should be. This is kind of what it looks like at the end of the game for the most part, but just for, just for two players. You will place out the main game board in the middle of the table. You're not going to see any of these pieces on here, and you're going to make sure that this has been turned to round one. There's a little marker here. Every single player is going to get certain types of their specific colored uh, cubes and, uh, and little circular discs. You'll be placing this tracker here on the zero and this tracker here on the white space. You're not going to start with any buildings here, but you will start with little guys that you'll place on the far right hand side of your board, as well as the alchemists that will go on the top left hand side of your board. Every player is going to get a certain number of buildings and a certain number of these guys here, which are called events, that you'll be able to choose either the left or right hand side um, and of course there's going to be spaces that you're going to place your specific um, influence tracker which is going to be right there in the middle with the arrow as well as depending on the round which is of course if it's round one you'll be selecting this side here and when it turns over to the last round you'll be flipping um, you'll be flipping it over so this is one two three four is nothing and then five goes over here yeah, all of your uh, victory point markers will be on the zero space here, and you're going to have a number of Inquisitors face down on the board, and a number of Inquisitors face up. Usually it'll just be at the aesthetic, and then these two will be face down, but you'll know kind of what they are and what to expect in the game. Usually you'll get four buildings, and you'll be getting one specific action card that you can take, and everybody's going to get a certain number of resources or currencies in this box here, and this is going to tell you not only what you are and what resources you get, but what you can ask for in trade throughout the game. Now nobody's going to know what they are now or like who gets what at the very beginning of the game. It'll be like this app that you can use on your tablet or on your phone that kind of divides and shuffles the boards up and like determines who gets what. Um, and also during certain phases in the trading phase, uh, who passes to whom and when you get your boards back. So no one's going to know who they're trading to necessarily, um, but you'll be able to trade to multiple people throughout the game. There's going to be a load of resources that you'll put in this little bin here. There's some angry mobs that you can set aside. One right here is got to the devil right now, but it won't be there. It'll be set aside. And then, of course, you're going to have these guys here. These are like the house guests. You'll put the very bottom of the secondary game board for when you need to place on somebody else's space. 
Um, that's the basic idea. Mainly just two main game boards and two, uh, I've got these little guys here, these two story um, towers that are hidden that are gonna come with uh, action markers on them. There's these things here that you can get, like they're like little banners that will increase your currency, as well as of course, uh, you're gonna have a lot of secret resources hidden under your specific player aids, uh, or, or sorry, under your specific barrier that's gonna include a player aid. But anyway, like I said, there's a better video that will explain all of this, and you should check out that if you're looking for a, a more in-depth setup for the game, because there's a lot that goes into this thing. Let's talk about gameplay, though. Okay, so how do you play the game? Well, there are five rounds in this game, and you're gonna be following this little aid here, which is very, very, very useful. It'll tell you all the different things that you'll be doing, the summary of a round. The first thing you'll do is you'll produce. You'll look at what's in front of you, because every board represents a certain player, which is randomized as well in the game, and how many resources you're going to get. So you'll put it on round one, and this player over here is gonna get a wood and a wheat and one of these stone statues. This player over here will get a marble, and they'll also be getting a wheat and a stone. So different resources for different players throughout the game. You'll take those resources, you'll put them here, along with any gold that you're going to get as well. And it's usually gonna start with just two until you upgrade. After you've gathered all your currency, you'll move on to the cards phase. In the first phase of the game, uh, you're, you can ignore this because the setup is going to simply give you four buildings to start and one event card. But if it's any round after that, you'll be discarding all building cards you own except for one, which means usually you'll have at least uh, you'll usually have two to three, maybe even four. Uh, then you're going to pass two. Uh, you're going to draw four building cards and one new event. And these cards, everything is basically layered out round to round, so it's always going to be the same cards for each and every round. But you might not get the same cards as you got the last game. As well as these events are also tracked from round to round. So you'll be getting the same events every round, but it might not be the same one you got last game. Then you'll choose to and pass the others. And it's going to pass in different rotations based on the round. And you're never going to pass the previous building that you got. So if you have four round two events, or four round two buildings, and one around one building, you'll be choosing two of these guys and then passing two of these guys. Not You'll leave this one here alone. Uh, after you've passed, you will move on to the next round. So you've got your cards now, you've got your buildings, and you've got your event, uh, then you have deals. So how deals work is you're going to be taking this little chest here, and inside the chest you're going to put any currency that you want to give, uh, any currency that you want to offer, basically. Um, so in this case, the devil is actually only interested in souls. And when the devil wants souls, he's gonna put resources in here. So he can put gold, he can put resources, and then he'll say, he'll take this little marker out and he'll say he wants either one or two souls for what he's offering. So if he wants one soul, he'll put these guys down here, and then he'll look inside of his bin and he'll put something in it. So for instance, he might put some of these gold currencies in here. He's like, okay, for five gold, if you give me just one piece of your soul, because every human gets three souls and every cultist gets two and he'll slide this down and he'll be done. And the next player, okay, the next player is gonna go ahead and pull out theirs. Well, they all do it at the same time, basically, and they'll go, okay, I am the cultist, and I can ask for either A, a piece of soul, or the cultist can ask for gold. And he can ask for two, three, four, five, or six gold. And he's like, oh, I want, oh, I don't need, my, I have two souls to begin the game with, so maybe I'll ask for four gold, and I'll offer, uh, a piece of marble here, and I will close this up. And the humans would do the same thing, but the humans are only ever after gold. Uh, that's all they want. They will put currency in, they put resources, and they'll try and get uh, gold. And the cultist is going to either want one soul or gold, and then the devil only wants your soul. And that's because the devil starts with a ton of currency, a ton of resources before uh, the game even begins. So he always has a lot to offer throughout the game at the cost of potentially losing your soul. After you've got all those things, you're gonna shuffle them all up, and then you're gonna use the app, and the app is gonna tell you who, which of these chests go to, people will decide if they wanna make the deal or not, and then after that, the chest will randomize it once more and give people the opportunity to make the deal again, unless it had already been taken. They all get closed, they all get shuffled up, and then they can go back to their respective owners with use of the app. And that is how all of the dealing section works. You're always gonna get two, two chances to, for somebody to take your deal. 
then the actions are going to take place. You are going to be taking um, the, if you have two events, you'll discard to one, and then you'll play events and actions. So you're going to be looking at this board here, and there's two spaces. One is for uh, one side of actions, and the other is for another side of actions. In the space in the middle, spaces in the middle is where you place your buildings that you can potentially build. And then up here, uh, in, the, in the top track area is going to be where you place your action discs. You'll start with two, and you can use more of them at the cost of one wheat for each one you want to use. The main actions in the game that you can take are A, you can take one of these discs and put it on a axe and hammer, which will symbolize that you want to use the action of a building that you have. So for instance, if I did that, I would get to use this church here, and this church, whenever I use it as an action, it's going to give me one gold and increase my morality by one. It's pretty, pretty freaking good. The next thing you can do is build a building. You'll simply place your little token on a building space, indicating you want to build the building underneath it, and you'll pay the cost of resources on the building. Every building has a resource cost, and it's always indicated in the top left-hand side of the card. So this card is going to need two wood, two stone, and a cup. If you want to use the action of that building as you're building it, you'll place the marker on the adjacent space. Next, you can choose to go ahead and build the next building, as well as play the next building's action, if possible. Most buildings are going to not actually have an action space. They're going to be cards that you place down on your field that will grant you the uh, effects of the card, as well as potentially the icon, which is going to give you uh, the ability to place these guys out here. So if you cannot play, if you cannot use the action of the building, if it's just something that mandatory, like, mandatorily comes into play, you'll just place that building to the side here. So only the building buildings that have the little sickles and hammer are going to go in your, on your board and in the, by the board facing you. So you're only going to have two of these active at any given point. So a lot of times you're just going to see buildings that give you like natural effects or victory points or some type of symbol that's going to help you advance throughout the game. But these big markers here, whenever you complete them, so for instance, if you uh, had a certain number of these specific items with symbols on them, like for instance, you needed five of the wing type symbol to get this specific victory banner, which you'll pl place out in front of your building here, or two of each of them, you'll place this one out here, and there's a value that you get. This guy will give you the alchemist, which is a wild symbol. This is going to give you two angel wings, etc., etc. For everybody, these main banners are worth victory points in the game, except for the devil. And for the small banners, you'll be taking these banners based on when you get them, and you'll be placing them down on your main board, which is going to provide you benefits. On the back of them is going to be a two, which is going to symbolize instead of getting just one resource of the chosen type, you'll now be getting two whenever you're able to complete the banner and place it out. And you'll get extra gold when placing these banners in the middle sections, whereas on the end sections, all you're going to be getting is a two of the resource, but you're never going to get two resources of a big one unless both spaces adjacent to it are filled in. So if I wanted the statue here, I wanted two of them, I have to make sure that two of these victory markers, small banners are placed there. And that's pretty much how this phase works. The only other little thing here is there's a guy that you can buy. It's your little characters that are going to be working for your kingdom. All they are, honestly, is just the ability to utilize them as a symbol, which will let you get these banners. All of these guys are just the three different types of symbols, which is going to be the cup, the house, and the flower. And if you unlock this guy here, he is going to be a wild symbol. But once you use them, they're going to go down back into your board, but they'll just cost more. Everybody can play this turn out simultaneously. Nothing affects any other player. But for the first round, I suggest you play it turn by turn so you can understand how it works, especially with a more experienced player. Then you can go ahead and cover your board back up. After your actions is the interest phase. Interest phase is going to be marked on this little track here. You can always gain interest, but you may only spend money to recover your, your interest in the first three phases of the game. So if at any point in time you're like, I need money, I'm going to go ahead and move this marker over a number of spaces. If you have this marker moved over a number of spaces, Based on the number of spaces it's moved over, this little thing is going to go around. It'll go around five times if you have five coins that you owe. It'll go around six times if you have six coins you owe. Every time it makes it back to its starting position, this marker is going to go up by one, and it's going to cost you more. And at the end of the game, if this marker is here, you're going to lose victory points. Additionally, if this marker ever goes, 
to the end space, you're gonna take a devil wing and this is gonna move back one space. So you don't wanna ever have too much interest and you always wanna pay it off if you can because it's always going to increase whenever it's not on the zero spot. Um, then we move on to the next phase. Uh, the next phase is going to be the reputation phase. Every player who has on the highest portion, uh, who has the highest on this track, and if there's a tie that also works, is gonna get an angel wing. If you get three angel wings at any point in this game, you'll be getting one of these little tokens here. Uh, these are called indulgence tokens, and they can make you stay away from bad guys. And anytime you have to pay get, get the four, three devil wings, these guys here, you're going to receive a house guest and lose negative two points. And that's just nasty. Uh, and that's for all the players who are lower are going to get those devil wings. And then the sliders will move back to the middle of the game board based on where you are on the board. It'll tell you how many spaces you have to move. After that, you're simply going to go back to the main ba basic production phase. Um, you'll advance the wheel on the track here and you'll progress. There are two other phases though, and that's based on the round of the game. In the first and fourth round, these aren't gonna be effective, but in every other round, one or two of them are gonna be active. There's a witch hunt where players are gonna pull out their hands with a marker and determine who they think doesn't have three souls, whether it's a human, a cultist, or the devil, and the, the, those players will lose valuable resources or reputation. And then there is the Inquisition. In the Inquisition, you're going to determine, you're gonna take your little thing out here and you're gonna like decide who you believe is, is a bad guy and who you think is a good guy. And you'll have this player marker, as well as you're going to have uh, a token that's gonna to represent uh, whether or not somebody is the devil or the cultist and so you can kind of suss out who your neighbors are and try and get them but also the most important thing is these guys become active and any of these guys that are flipped over are going to become active and you'll lose victory points if you cannot either a bribe them um, uh, throughout the game which is when you spend money into your case here during the Inquisition, as, as in including your voting. You can remove a certain number of them, up to three of them, if you spend enough coins collectively. But otherwise, you're simply going to take the damage. You can use souls to ward them off, or you can use indulgences. So for instance, if I'm the devil, and I've collected souls throughout my gameplay, I can make the aesthetic go away with my indulgence, because I got a lot of angel feathers, and then the debt collector, the fundamentalist, and the plebeian will go away because I gathered three other souls, which means there's only two that I actually have to deal with in the game. And as a human player, if I lost all my souls and have no indulgence, I went too far dark, I'll have to deal with all of these guys and their negative victory conditions throughout the game. There's also going to be certain things throughout the game that will determine whether or not the devil gets valuable resources and the cultist gets valuable resources based on the amount of souls they've gathered or souls they've given to the devil. But that's all the main game phases. Five rounds, and you'll just be moving this tracker over, and every single time you move the tracker over, it will tell you if there's a new action that takes place throughout the phase. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. For the most part, you're gonna score points for the buildings that you place, which is gonna be on the bottom left. You will score points for any of the banners that you have up here, and any bonus resources that you have as well down here. And that's pretty much how the game Deal With The Devil goes. Let's talk about my review. So while Deal With The Devil is only five rounds with only about six or so phases, and sometimes, yeah, I think it's, what is it, it's six phases and possibly up to eight phases, the game does play about two hours. You are always going to have to have four players, which is probably my biggest negative in the game, is the fact that it must always be played in a four player game. I would have preferred if it was at least four or five players and you can add an extra human or something like that in, but, Mm, yeah, that's just how this game is. So it's only going to see play at certain points in time in my game group because I'm going to only have to have four players. I can't have three and I can't have more than that. Mm, that's just that's just how it goes. So if you don't have a four player group, not probably the game for you unless you have multiple people switching out between games. Uh, another little thing that kind of drove me nuts about this game is uh, players mentioning what kind of deal they got or what kind of deal they gave. And while that technically I could go, she's lying or he's lying or whatever, and maybe they're just making a trickery and whatnot, when it's your first game or two with new players, if you're a pretty decent board gamer, you can try and figure out, and everybody can figure out who the devil is, who the cultist is, and who the humans are rather quickly. 
You need to make sure in this game you are using the jester tokens. There are tokens that have these little jester faces. You need to place as many as you can in your trades so that people do not know what your actual trades are. And when you get a deal, you need to make sure that you do not announce your deal. You need to make sure that no one puts a chest, that nobody like looks at the chest and puts it back in and somebody else spends an extra amount of time pulling out. It needs to all be at once. No one says anything during these phases whenever it involves a chest and no one talks about their deals and also no one returns the chest until after everybody returns a chest at the same time and make sure that you use those jester tokens so that way no one seems no one seems suspiciously trying to take enough resources to sell off their soul and also no one sounds like they have a whole lot more resources in their chest than any other player this is a thing that can happen most likely you won't notice how many resources are in the chest but you will start to know who received your deals. You'll be like, oh, this person, I put a ton of stuff in my box and this person is taking the longest. Most likely they have my thing because I hear them clicking around. That is something that can kill a game, uh, at least for certain people. And then they give like certain information. You want to try to make this as informationless as possible in those phases. That being said, other than that type of thing with the chess and the four player aspect, this is an amazing game. This is a heck of a lot of fun. The idea of being able to kind of build your kingdom all while having a secret identity and then secretly making actions to hide what your true intentions are with this track here and how you want to go about utilizing it. You can start putting yourself in deep debt to give yourself a ton of valuable houses and hopefully build your engine to reduce your debt and then increase your reputation is super great. And there's costs associated too. The devil might be offering you tempting deals and sometimes it's worth taking them. It's not, it's, it's not bad to lose maybe one soul because you can gain 10 victory points and maybe this guy's only gonna make you lose six so there's four victory points for a deal with the devil awesome and other times you give away all your souls and at the end of the game all these guys pop up because you didn't bribe them and you weren't able to stave off them from popping into play because too many players gave their soul to the devil all of a sudden you have now received a smorgasbord of negative victory points you can go from 20 points all the way down to negative four, and then you're left in the dust. So you have to be aware of when it's a good idea. And what's a good idea? In the first game, you're gonna have issues determining what a deal's worth and what a deal isn't worth. Now, of course, with resources, you can buy resources from the bank here. It's three for commons and five for expensive ones, and you can return them. You can return them for one for commons and two for expensive ones. So you have an idea of what a deal would be worth based on these resources. But souls? Souls become a different thing. How much is it worth to give? And also, has anybody else given their soul? If too many people give away their souls, bad things start happening. And if the cultist gives away her souls or his souls, then they're gonna get value for doing so, but they still need these to protect from the Inquisition. So you have to kind of deduce what is worth what based on each game, which changes. How you choose to use your buildings, what characters you choose to take out, how many devils is it worth gathering, and how many visitors is it worth taking, and points worth losing, that's going to make it not matter so much about that, that board and your reputation as long as your kingdom does well. And there's this weird balancing act in three different portions of the game. And then there's a social act. I'm not a big fan of the social act when it comes to this, so you need to be quiet about it, but when you are playing the game and using all the other phases and people see you start building things, how did you get all those resources? When did you get all those resources? I thought I only saw you have five coins. Why do you have 20 coins now? That is all wonderful. I love the idea of players being able to suss out who's what and who's doing when, uh, who's, who's, who is doing what and how <laughs> in the game and when they took a deal or oh, I saw a, a deal with the devil and somebody took it. You know, that's that's really great after the deal has been made and after all the chests are done, you're like, oh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure there was a deal that was made with the devil. How many souls does the devil have? We have to try and make sure that that, you know, okay, who's giving away their souls? Don't be doing that now. Or, or somebody's giving away all their souls and is the one that's going, oh, you guys better be good. Don't be giving your souls away, even though they're the ones that are being treacherous. Uh, there's a lot to this game. There's a ton of different options and there's a ton of different buildings. Now, given that 
every building and every event is going to see play in this game each and every game you're not going to see the same ones twice in a given from game to game and you might get different combinations and buildings are just a small part of the game everything is just a small part of the game but it all fits really really tightly this game with the app is cool too. The app is just going to sit on the table. It'll tell you this goes to green, this goes to red, and it's really quick about it too. This is probably one of the best app readers I've seen where you just hover it over your camera's, um, you know, your little camera and the QR reader on the back of the board here is instantly done. I, I love that. I didn't have to sit there and fuddle with it and mess with it. It just worked perfectly, and the game went very smoothly once we understood how to do this. The next time we play this game, it'll be probably an hour and a half, really, with the four players, because it's always going to be four players. It'll always be roughly two hours, but as you get better with it, it'll be less. And certain people I already have in my head who I want to play with, because they're going to make this game a ton of fun with how they add pieces and what their deals are going to be, because it's always going to be different based on each game. Uh, if you can't tell, I really, really like this game. It's a lot of fun. There are some little qualms I have with it, and certain people are not going to to like this game. It might be too long, there might be too many phases and too many things to remember, there might be too many components and things that you have to do and how you have to keep track of everything, but if you sit down and you go from round to round and understand each of the rounds and phases and what you need to do and how you need to interact and what deals are best to take, there's a lot of really cool aspects to this game. And I think for the most part, most modern gamers that don't mind the four player aspect are really, really gonna love Deal with the Devil like I do. And that might also be because I won, which is, you know, always a nice little touch, but <laughs> I, I definitely want to play again. And I want to play it again with mul multiple different groups of people because I love to see how it plays out with different people and how they interact with each other. I almost forgot to mention, there's like the quality and the art to the game. It just kind of like eluded me. Uh, although this game has brilliant artwork, the quality, uh, all the pieces are great. There's nothing I'm worried about getting damaged other than of course the boxes if you pull out these little tokens too hard it might rip them they're kind of hard to pull through and like this board here is going to be changing and you have to pop it out and then put it in the opposite way which doesn't exactly fit super well right um, but otherwise it's really, really solidly designed. I like the cool aspects of placing the cubes in the board. So it's kind of like, it's not double thick, it, like it is on this side, which I would have preferred for the game board, but all the little components and how they interact with each other is great. And the art is splendid. Each of the different uh, castles here and the colorations of the different characters is really, really cool. And I like how they made each of these feel different. And it feels like you're behind your own little fort in the game. And you do feel exactly like they want you to feel. You're the devil who owns a kingdom, trying to gather souls of mortals by offering them tempting deals. You're the cultist who has his souls and needs to keep them, but at the same time, he wants to give them to the devil. And then you're the human beings and you're weighing the your conscience about is it worth gathering these these great deals from the devil and the cultists at the cost of my soul and then the inquisition comes and burns down my whole castle for not actually staying true to the good morality it just it really all works okay okay that's all i gotta say about that Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deal with the Devil by CGE. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up. If you'd like to see us do live streams, we do them on Whatnot on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And we also do them on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, Whatnot is where we sell and make content. So we sell a lot of used games. And then on the other platforms, we do playthroughs of games literally just like this one, and this would be a great game to see a playthrough of, I think. Uh, you can go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet and you've been here more than once, I greatly I'll ask you to consider subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel. It keeps making me want to do more and more videos. And when I see 90% of people that watch my videos and multiple times and don't subscribe, it's like, it's de-heartening. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I've earned your subscription uh, by now. And if not, that's okay. Maybe next time, maybe next time I will earn your subscription, but at least consider it. I know I do the same thing on videos where I just don't feel like getting up and doing that because I'm watching on my computer or uh, you don't want to get the notifications every day. I, I, I get it. So if I did though, and if you think it's worth it, please consider doing so. That's all I got this time, guys. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to stealing your souls next time.